Okay, um, as I said, we're going to carry on with the uh, called the Wudang hand weapons. These were the precursors to our precursors, rather, to our push hands. And uh, when I begin to show them to you, it'll become quite evident that this is exactly where push hands has come from. And <clears throat> unfortunately, most people have lost the whole plot where push hands is concerned. They've gone in, you know, they've gone into the competition thing of trying to push each other over big, low stances, etc. Whereas uh, you'll see in, in the Wu Dang stuff, they wanted to invent some training methods whereby they could take their everything they've learned in their Wu Dang forms into a subconscious level, so that it would just be <laughs> reflex. So they invented twelve brief two-person sets. <clears throat> to teach us this reflex action so that it would become automatic. In other words, so that we, we would just <laughs> react to a situation without having to think about it. And these are the ones that I'll be teaching you today. I'll try and get through four, maybe even five of them today. Uh, and yeah, so m most people, after Yang Lu Chang got a hold of it, he invented the, the Pung hinge push hands that I teach and then slowly down the track it became <coughs> softer and softer until you get people saying, well this doesn't work, let's start pushing each other harder and putting it into competition. Well, they've, you know, they've taken a totally different avenue and they've lost the whole idea of learning Taiji as a self-defense art rather than a sport art. So basically anyone who does that silly push hands where we try and push each other over, why push someone, you know? It's useless trying to push someone. You know you can push anyone over. You walk up to someone and push them, they're going to be get pushed. That's, that's it, you know? But if you stand like this and solid, of course it's much more difficult to push someone over. And that's basically what most push hands is today, unfortunately. So we have these little uh, training methods that a lot of them are similar, but then some of them are totally different. And I can just see, the, as these people were working these things out, I can just see what they were thinking of when they were working them out. And they call them the, the Wudang hand, ham, hand weapons because they named them after weapons. For instance, the first one I'll teach you is the Wudang hammer. Although a little down the track, there's also the Wudang nun. So... <laughs> <laughs> Pop, you know. So I don't know. I guess they ran out of weapons to call them. And there's things like the Wudang plow. Uh, that could be used as a weapon, I guess. So we'll be doing the uh, Wudang hammer to start with, and the spear, and the sword, and the plow, and maybe the axe even. So we'll start off with the uh, with the hammer. Each of these, again, works upon Dim Mac strikes, because Wudang stuff is much closer to Dim Mac than modern Taiji, of course. It works upon Dim Mac strikes to the body, and it, it just, just works upon the very best weapons that we can use to strike to these Dim Mac points. Normally, with my children, this is what I'm teaching my children now, and it's really good to teach children this too, because they just love it. You know, you tell, tell a child to learn this, and they're going, oh, God, boring, boring, I can do this. But it's very difficult to teach children Tai Chi. So I always like to give them, when, when I started teaching my own children the, these Wudang forms, uh, they just loved it, and they're having a game with it. You know, the first thing I noticed was they were just laughing their tits off. <laughs> with each other. And, and little Kathleen, who's here with me, is, well, the whole family's here on this trip, she loves hitting Daddy, so she's allowed to hit Daddy on this. And, she, and one time there, she, I said, well, just hit me across there. So she's going, bang, like this. And I end up with my glasses like this. My nose is like this. And she's laughing and laughing. So it's a good thing to give kids as well, to give them a bit of rough and tumble, because then they think, oh, I'm, I can do Kung Fu. See, I can do this. But it's also good to get them uh, some pads. We just use shin pads, soccer shin pads on the arms. They tend to be a bit better than the, and a bit cheaper than your uh, your regular uh, sparring things on your arms. So just get a, get a, some soccer mitts, stick them on your arms, so you, you can get, get them a little bit more of a realistic hit. That's the only compensation I make, especially with children, when they because there's a lot of strikes to the arms with the hammer. One of the interesting things was that famous fight that Wu Gongyi had. 59-year-old man had with the Chan Hak Fu, the then leader of the uh, White Crane style, 
was that uh, at the end of it, and only lasted three rounds, there was a build as a real fight. There was no punches pulled. And Chen Hak Fu's arms were like tree trunks, and he couldn't move his arms for three weeks because Wu Gong Yi had hammered his arms. So every time Chen Hak Fu went to hit him, Wu Gong Yi would just hammer his arms every time. And they just, they just swelled up. They, they couldn't carry on in the end. So it's interesting to note that. So the hammer is quite a, quite an, and also hammering to the arms, is quite a relevant uh, way of defending yourself because quite often, it's, you know, if, if it's against someone who doesn't know much, and just, uh, just like this, then it's okay. You can get in and you can do all your things that you're taught to. But, but quite often, if you, if, you, if you have to defend yourself against another martial artist, for instance, maybe the only thing is that you ca can get to are, are the person's arms and the vital points along the arms, and there are quite a, quite a few. So that's what we first of all start out in uh, doing, Mike. So you have to have a partner for this, obviously. So if you can just uh, break off, just grab, turn to the person next to you and say, may I have this dance, please? <laughs> OK, now it's important to stand in a power stance. This is a Taiji power stance. One foot straight and one foot in this way. Not like this, like the normal, normal push hands we see. This is weak. This is strong. It's called a power stance. Every native race has some sort of power stance. American Indians have this stance. The Inuit people have this stance. The Australian Aboriginals have this stance. So they've worked out the correct stance to be ah, the most powerful. And when you stand like that, it tends to looks like a tube of toothpaste squeezing up from a, it's, you can feel this coming up through your body. Wah, when you come out with a stand like this, You've lost it. You see, you've lost your power now. It's gone. Now, uh, you've, got, uh, you've got waste power again. So we stand in that stance facing each other. We'll just have the right foot forward just for the, just for the sake of doing it. Everyone does it the same way, although you do it four different ways, of course. You do it this way, and then you do it this way, and then you do it this way, and this way. So we do it four different ways. But I'll just teach you the one way to start with. Yep, your partner just lobs a little punch in on you and it's the old pung hinge, it's the old pung hinge. The other hand doesn't necessarily touch it and this hand must bump it, don't push it like that, he's got to feel uh, like that. Now your partner agrees of course to, to allow you to do this to him, you know, <laughs> there's, 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 there's no sort of going, oh, you, uh, you know, so I'm just going to go bang, pull it back, and hammer. Just on colon 10 or colon 12. It doesn't matter which you hit there. But as long as just on the upper forearm, that's where you're going to hammer. So there's your first movement. The most important thing here is to get your waist doing the movement. If you just look at me now, I could do it like this, which is incorrect. My waist didn't move. All my hand is going to do is this. This is all my hand's going to do. See how it's in the center? It's not going to move. The, the waist is going to make it look like it's moving much more than it is. So I'm actually doing a sort of a, a reverse number nine, see? Or a comma or something like that. So it goes, <laughs> and you can get that quite, just throw the punch there. Watch. <laughs> You can get it working very, very quickly. But we just do it slowly at first. It's, it, it, this is like push hands. It, it's just like push hands. You'll find that it just works like push hands. And if we do it slowly in the beginning, then you can just get that, you know, push hands is a nice interaction between two people. And so is this. It'll become a nice interaction between two people. So that's your first move. Turn to the right and hammer down. The left hand is just here as a guard. It doesn't necessarily touch the other hand. So I'm turning left. I'm turning right and I'm turning back to the left again on the one movement. Okay, okay just, have a, just have a little play around with that. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Benny. Okay, the, 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 the main problem here is people aren't doing that. They're trying to do it too quickly and you're just getting that. See, that's what we, we don't want is just that there's no power in that. See, it's got to be left, right, left. The waist has to go left, 